Good morning, guys. We're over here at HMS on the dyno again. And you guys might recognize this car uh, from another video a little bit back. Uh, this is Steve Johnson's beautiful 2012 STI that I just tuned. Uh, we did a pump gas tune on it with the Blausch Turbo. And I told you guys he was gonna be coming back for E85 and you can guess what we're gonna be doing today. So he's coming back for E85 today. Um, we're gonna do flex fuel on this one with the Cobb software, which is really cool. Um, so basically I'm going to give you guys a rundown of the sensors and everything it takes to do this. Um, it's still in stock engine. So, um, you know, stay tuned today. You guys might even see some pretty good numbers on E85. I have a feeling, uh, we're going to see somewhere in the four region, but we'll see how far he wants to go with it. Um, so I'm going to take you guys through here, the engine bay, and I'm going to show you some of the parts that are required for this and, uh, kind of try to teach you guys along the way and explain uh, why we do certain sensors and what they do and what we need to do, so. All right, so we got the screws out of the stock map sensor here. We're just gonna go ahead and pop it out. It just removes just like that. And then we're gonna put the, the new cob unit in there. So I should have probably opened up the box before I started this. So inside the box, you get the Cobb sticker and you get what we need right here. You get this guy. So this is one of my favorite uh, map sensors to use on these cars because not only is it plug and play, but it is very accurate, very reliable. Cobb makes a good product as always. Let's see what I get out of the box here. Okay. So, as you can see here, I'm gonna show you guys. That's the stock one, and this is the Cobb one. They look very similar, just different color, but the difference is inside and how they're made, so. Okay, this one's gonna go right on here, just like that, right in the stock location. Just gonna pop that on, just like that. They give you bolts in the kit um, that you can use, but I like to reuse the stock bolts, just personally. Um, plus, I don't want to go digging for an Allen wrench right now, so I'm, stock bolts will work just fine. No issues there as long as they're in good condition, which these ones look excellent. So we're just going to pop this back on here. You don't want to over torque it, just nice and snug. You don't need to kill these things. It's plastic you're dealing with here, so just remember that. And then the sensor is going to plug right in, just like that. So plug and play, very simple. We've got our intake temp and our map sensor now. So we are set. One thing I wanted to touch upon that I, I know some of you guys are probably asking right now that know about this is instead of going speed density, why didn't we just uh, go to a big MAF? Well, we can increase the diameter of this pipe and do a bigger uh, MAF housing to get the scaling we need to tune the car. Um, we can do that. Um, it's not really my preference uh, when you go bigger turbo like this because at lower RPMs, your resolution will suffer. So you are you will have some drivability issues potentially. And um, I just don't like doing it that way. The other way we can do is you can do a hybrid. Um, you can do a MAF on the low end and you can switch over the MAP sensor on the high end. Um, that just complicates things in my opinion. Um, but you know, a lot of people like tuning that way. That's great. That's just not my style. So I've done it before. Um, it's just a little more work and it just makes things more complicated in my opinion. I just like to keep things simple and uh, it makes it a lot easier to diagnose the car in the future if there's ever an issue as well. Because if you do a hybrid setup, it can get very complicated where is it the MAF doing it? Is the MAP? Is it your transition? Is It could be all kinds of different things. So we're just going to keep it simple and uh, we're going to do it this way. So now I'm going to show you guys uh, the flex fuel part of this. So you see right here, this is the Cobb flex fuel kit so this is the actual uh, brain for the kit basically you got wiring that's going to go down to the tgv where we get our signal it's going to plug into where the tgv usually goes and then there's also um, a flex fuel sensor 
that you're not going to probably be able to see it, but basically it tees into the fuel lines here and that tells the ECU the ethanol content at all times. And so what we do is we use that in the software to be able to do flex fuel and blend all of our tables in the map. And I'm going to show you guys that when I pull up the map here. So now we're going to, we got our little sensors installed. I'm going to get the car strapped down and get it ready to go. And then I'm going to cut back in when I got the laptop hooked up and show you guys the flex fuel tables. Okay, I've got the software opened up here, and I'm going to show you guys now how to scale for the map sensor and the intake air temperature sensor. So basically, in here we have a bunch of tables. Uh, we have our map sensor calibration multiplier and our map sensor calibration offset. So what these two values are going to do is they're going to tell the computer basically uh, the voltage curve of the map sensor that's being used for the pressures around the or across the entire range. So it's a little bit complicated to explain um, how to figure these numbers out, but the manufacturers that make these sensors have given us the data that they know and they've done the research and the engineers that the sensor needs. So basically what we're gonna do, this is the stock map sensor value right here. We're just gonna plug in um, the values that COP gives us for that sensor that we installed. We're gonna put that multiplier in there and then we're gonna change down the offset and we're gonna change that. And then that's gonna recalibrate the computer so that it can read that sensor properly and then we'll be good to go. And then the next sensor we're gonna do is the intake air temperature sensor. So if you come over here, I'll show you guys. Here's the intake air temperature. So this is the voltage curve of the sensor over the whole range. Over This is voltage up top and these this is temperature at the bottom. So as you can see, you could scroll over. There's, you know, it has a curve. I don't know, you can't really see it but that's a voltage curve, you know, all the way across the range. So the stock sensor is different than the intake air temperature sensor we installed. So if we don't change this table properly to match that sensor, the intake air temperature is never going to be accurate and that's going to affect our tune and our mixture. So we're going to want to make sure to change this. So I've done a lot of cars in the past with this setup. So I'm going to go ahead and just import the table that I need from another map that I have. So I'm going to come over here and let's see, I'll just find like a, uh, Go over to this one. This one was this car's run the exact same sensor, so I can literally just import those values, which you know the Cobb software is very nice for that. So, so I'm gonna come up here. And yeah, we'll just go to this one. So I'm gonna import here and I'm just gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find the sensor that I need. So right here, intake air temperature sensor calibration. I'm just gonna import just that into this map. And then you can see there in the in the yellow and the red, those are the numbers that have changed. So the curve has actually changed quite a bit, especially down at the bottom here. So this new curve matches the sensor that we installed and that's all we have to do for that. So that's all calibrated and ready to go. And then we're gonna go back to the map sensor. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna import it from another map. I'll just use like my Forester, for example, since it runs the same exact sensor. So I will come over to my Forester. And we will come into here and we'll just open that one up. We'll come down and we will import it. So we'll come over here and we'll import the map sensor multiplier and offset. So um, I have to hold down the shift key here. Let's see if I can do this and still film. There we go, got those two tables. We'll go ahead and hit okay. And you can see now the number is quite different. We got 14.504 for the multiplier. All right, got those values in. So those are all set. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, some of the flex fuel stuff. So we have a tab here called flex fuel. And I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown. I mean, we could make a whole video on this because this software is very in depth and it can do a whole lot. It's really awesome what Cobb has done. They have given us the ability to take the stock ECU further than I had ever imagined. And they're constantly adding new features all the time. Um, so, you know, hats off to those guys. They, you know, Cobb's got it figured out. You know, as far as the Subaru game goes, they've got this ECU pretty much, you know, exploited as much as possible. So we have a couple features here that are key. Um, so basically 
the way the ECU usually works is we get what are called real-time tables, which allow us to actually tune on the fly while the car's running instead of shutting it off, reflashing every time like we have to do at open source. We don't get all the tables accessible to us because there's only so much RAM that the stock ECU has to make this available. So Cobb will pick, you know, the most valuable tables they feel that we need and, you know, the rest we will have to do reflashes every once in a while. But this table here allows us basically to have an A and a B table for everything. So what the Flex software does is it's just gonna switch, it's gonna blend between A and B maps and it's according to the ethanol content from the sensor. So it's actually a really simple way to do it. It's pretty, pretty ingenious actually, the way they set it all up. But typically like when we're tuning a car, we're gonna want the real time tables when we're making changes on the dyno because it's a lot quicker, a lot easier, we can see changes, but we can't have all of them on both maps at the same time. So what we do is we, I usually start with the pump gas map and I'll tune that pump gas map all the way out, get it all done. And then I'll switch over to the ethanol map and I'll tune that one next. Well, this feature here allows us to actually dictate A and B high or low ethanol content either way. So what's cool about this is you can actually um, get real time, you know, on whatever map you're working on, you know, you can switch it back and forth. So you can also, um, so basically these are the A and B tables. So A table has everything, you know, exhaust cam, intake cam, boost targets, timing, everything is there, right? These little R's next to it are mean they're real time. These means I can change these tables in real time while the car's running. These ones I can't, I have to reflash. Now you go to B table, you're gonna have basically the same exact thing except no real time tables. So these are, so basically what I usually do is I set up B for ethanol content that's high and I set up A for ethanol content that's low. Well, during the tuning process to make workflow easier, we can actually copy these groups. So we can just come into here into flex fuel copy. And I can actually switch, I can actually swap all the tables from A to B just so I can quickly get real time on my ethanol map as well. And then when I'm done, I can either leave it that way and tell this feature over here which one's high and low or I can swap them back. This feature makes things extremely easy because otherwise I'd have to manually go in and switch every single one of these tables. So like I said, Cobb, they nailed it. They got this thing dialed and figured out. So, well, that gives you a little overview there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up this map and get the car ready and I will come back to you guys. All right, so I wanted to show you guys real quick the speed density VE table. So now that we're tuning via speed density, I've switched the ECU to tell it to do speed density, and this is gonna be the entire fuel map that the ECU uses to fuel the car. So as you can see, it just starts out with just a bunch of hundreds. Um, that obviously won't work. Uh, car's not gonna run. So just from experience, I'm just gonna go through here and I'm just gonna create a quick base map, just so that'll get us running so that we can make changes and get this dialed. So let's see if, this, if I can get this close enough to where the car will run good. So I'm just gonna come in here. And I'm going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Come over here. Now, you know, every car is going to be different with this. I've done a few cars, so I have a general idea of what should make this car run decent enough to get it started. Um, but this table is going to have to change drastically by the time I'm done with the tune. Um, but we're just going to come through, and I'm just going to go by experience and, and see if I can get it close enough to where I can get it to start and uh, see what happens here. So, come in here. Right. This table looks really complicated, but it is really straightforward. Once you get, you know, going on this stuff, it is not bad at all. And it's actually, I really love tuning with the speed density VE map. I mean, it's pretty cool, so. All right, we got that all set. So we're gonna go ahead and save this map. We'll save it here. And then we're gonna go ahead and flash this over to the car. Key on. And flash it. Now during this process, whenever you're flashing a map, do not turn the key off because it will literally brick the ECU and then you are dead in the water. 
So we're going to go ahead and flash this map over. Okay. Good there. We're gonna, it's going to clear the ECU. Keep back on. All right, so the map is flashed. Everything's good there. So now we're going to go ahead and connect live to the compute to the ECU. So we're going to go ahead and connect on. Okay, now we're connected live. We're going to pull up the dashboard here. So we've got all our gauges, and then this is also going to show us exactly where we're at on the VE table. So what's cool about the Cobb stuff is it actually has trace features. So you can see here, 14 is basically a zero. We're at atmosphere and zero vacuum. So this is where the engine's off, obviously. And then anything from the to the right is positive pressure. So that's boost. And then vacuum when the engine's running is over here. So vacuum, no vacuum, no boost, boost. It's a pretty simple concept. So. Let's see if I got it close enough where this thing will even start. Oh, it's running. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna look at everything. So we can already see it's a little bit lean right there. And you're gonna see these trims start going up and down, up and down. So we're gonna fix that. So literally all I have to do is just add a little bit right here. And you can see the trims are already starting to come back down. So this is an immediate change. The V table on the cop stuff is actually live, which this makes tuning so much easier. I mean, this saves a mountain of time and I love it personally. So, so we're gonna go ahead and let this thing warm up. I'm gonna make a couple more predicted changes here. Fuel trims are already looking way better. So. Basically, what we're going to do now is we're going to use the dyno and we're going to drive the car on the dyno and just all very conditions. We're going to accelerate. We're going to cruise. We're going to go through vacuum. I'm going to get all over this map and, and make sure my fuel trims are as good as that or better in all of these cells as close as possible. So this does take a little bit of time. Um, yeah, you know, a dyno is so is the tool to use for this because it's a controlled environment. I have the ability to put the car through all these ranges where on the street it would be extremely difficult and time consuming to get all the cells. Um, but it's not impossible. So that's also possible. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to set the dyno up in road mode, which basically allows me to just drive the car however I want, like it's on the road, but it's a controlled environment and I, I don't have to worry about traffic lights or traffic or anything. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to dial all these cells in until I get these fuel trims exactly where they need to be. And then from there, we'll be able to start doing power pulls and then we'll check the wide band on the dyno and we'll, we'll start adjusting this side of the VE table. So come back to you here in a sec. numbers on pump gas, uh, 331 and 290 torque on pump. Curve looks pretty good. And we're going to go in and we're going to check our air fuel and our boost. Red is air fuel, blue is boost. We're at about 18 PSI up at the top and air fuels are nice and fat, uh, about 11.2 to 11.0 up top towards red line. Um, I tried to lean those out a little bit uh, to see if it would pick up power, but it actually started uh, pulling timing and detonating, so I had to add the fuel back in. So uh, this car is on a top mount, and the top mount air cooler is obviously not going to be as good as a front mount air cooler. 
So uh, the combustion chambers get a little hot, so we're gonna have to cool it off. We have to keep, keep it really rich. It likes to be right here where it's at. Uh, no knock at all on the, on the last couple pulls. Uh, we could pull those up here. So this is the last pull. Basically we have feedback knock here is all zeroed out, which is what we want. Uh, we're running about 14 to 15 degrees of timing right up at the top of red line. Not a whole lot of timing, uh, but then again, like I said, this is a stock engine. He wants to keep it reliable, and we don't want this thing to knock. Uh, we're trying to stay away from knock as much as possible on the stock engine because the pistons are very fragile, and it's just you will crack a ring land, and it's not going to be a good day, especially on pump gas. On E85, we're going to have a lot of oxygen, an extra cooling effect from the E85. It's going to cool the combustion chamber down. And we're also going to have that extra octane so we'll be able to definitely lean on it a little bit more on e85 with the safety margin but as far as pump gas goes you can't get greedy on pump gas with a stock motor so we're going to keep it safe he doesn't want to break this thing so now we're pretty much ready to switch over to e85 so we're going to do that and then i'm going to show you guys uh the map and how it flexes it's pretty cool so stay tuned Now that we got the E85 in the tank, I'm going to go ahead and connect to the ECU and you'll see the flex fuel sensor will actually start sensing the ethanol that's in it and making changes on the fly. It's pretty cool. So we're going to connect to the ECU. I've already key cycled the car a couple times, so I'm sure the ethanol content's gone up a little bit. Okay, so there you go. Ethanol content, we're at 48.5, so we're going to go ahead and start it up. Now the fuel pump's running, there she goes. So this is gonna take a minute to get all the fuel flowing through the lines and, and all that, but the ethanol content, once it stabilizes, then we'll start tuning. So what's really cool is you can see the fuel trims are perfect because the flex fuel is doing its job. It's a pretty awesome thing. Once you, you know, it just shows that cops got this stuff figured out. They did a great job on it and just makes my job so much easier. So we're gonna let this thing sit here, run for a little bit, stabilize, and then we'll start doing some pulls. All right, now that the ethanol level stabilized, you can see we got 71.1% ethanol in the tank. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, why isn't that 85%? It's supposed to be 85. Well, you always have about a gallon or so left in the tank. We went down to the fuel light was on, but you know, there's still gonna be a gallon or two that you're never gonna be able to get out of the tank. So. On a car like this, um, this, this setup's not too big. I'm not too worried about it. The benefits from ethanol really start showing over 60%. So 71% ethanol is more than enough content for us to make the power we need today. If this was a, you know, one of the race cars or something that was really pushing the limits, then we definitely want that content to be as close to 85% as possible. But 71% ethanol is more than enough, so we should be good to go. So we're gonna start doing some pulls. I've already modified the VE table way over here on the right, just in this area a little bit compared to this area because this is gonna be the region we're gonna be in with the higher boost levels on E85. So I'm gonna to need to add some more fuel over there to compensate and uh, get things dialed. So like I said, that's just a guess. That's my preliminary adjustment. I'm gonna do some pulls. That's all gonna change, of course. Um, I'm gonna to have to make a bunch of changes to the map. This is just doing base pulls, just getting things where I can tip into it safe enough on the dyno so I can get some readings. So. All right, here we go. There's our first pull on E85. As you can see, torque jumped up big time. Power came up as expected. Curve looks really good. So she's doing great. Now we just need to turn the boost up and keep going. You can already see second pull in. The gains are just outrageous. 375 wheel. 
We had a 50 torque. This is only at 20 PSI. Um, timing is still really safe. It's just, it's amazing what E85 does, you know, when you got a boosted car, it's just awesome. No knock, everything's super smooth. Car's doing great. Well, let's keep going. Looking good. Coming up on that 400 mark. All right, so we took a little break on the dyno. You saw the last pull. We're really close to 400. We're right there. So got to let the car cool off a little bit. Um, it's got a top mount, and top mounts just, they get hot. They get heat soaked. So I'm going to let it cool down for a little bit here. I'm going to water down that top mount, and the next pull should be over 400. You know, I really recommend a front mount intercooler for setups that are like this, you know, going over that 400 mark. The top mount will work, but front mount's just better, you know, all around. You know, we're gonna make it work, but uh, we'll come over here and we'll take a look at the graph. It looks pretty good. You know, as you can see, the gains are pretty tremendous with the 85, but air fuel ratio is just dead nuts. 11.5 all the way out. Boost, we're at about 24 pounds right now, holding out pretty good. Um, I don't really go above 24 pounds on this turbo much, um, you know, because it starts to get a little out of its efficiency range and starts really working that top mount really hard. If the car had a front mount on it, then I'd push it further because I'm not too worried about it. And I know the front mount could take up the, the extra heat, but top mount's already getting warm. So this is a good place it likes to be. Uh, timing's moderate. We're not, we're not pushing the timing all the way to the edge, um, but you know we're right in the middle. So we're at a happy medium where the motor should stay together. Everything should stay happy. So we're going to ice down this intercooler and then we're going to do another pull and see if we can get over that 400 hump.
Well, there it is, guys. 400 wheel horsepower, 392 wheel torque, 24 PSI. Iced her down a little bit, gave her a couple more pulls, and she did it. We'll look over our logs here. Make sure that pull was clean, which it looked like it was to me. I was watching the, the gauges. So, looks really clean. No knock, everything looks awesome. About 17, we're gonna run about 17, 16 and a half, 17 degrees of timing up at the top. Still safe, good for the stock motor. You can see those intake air temperatures though. They're really starting to get up there. That top mount's working real hard. So, that's a prime example, guys, why I'm always an advocate for a front mount, but we made it work. Everything's working out good, so. Really happy with the results on the car, and uh, customer's happy. He said he's good. He's like, call it, call it right there. So you got his 400 number, and we're all set. Well, here's the final results, guys. As you can see, I made 400 Mustang Dyno 392 wheel torque, which works out to 453 Dyno Jet horsepower to the wheels. Uh, couldn't be happier customers happy everybody's happy so car did great no issues at all stock motor still holding strong and uh, everything went well so as you can see Cobb flex fuel works great flawless seamless just makes my job really easy makes me look really good as a tuner because they did their job as engineers and really did good job with this software um, it's amazing what you can do on the stock ECU so until next time guys I will see you later